Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I've got lots and lots of content, uh, almost two talks worth, so we're going to go really fast, uh, but hopefully all good content and um, stuff you can take advantage of. How many people here are using ASP.NET MVC today? Great. Uh, and, um, well, hopefully you'll want to use it even more uh, after the talk's over. Um, I'm uh, going to have an unplug session right after this talk, so if I don't get a chance to answer your question at the end or we run out of time to do questions at the end, know that there's a whole other full hour of me that you can ask any ASP.NET MVC, any Azure or any other related question you want, um, and be happy to answer more questions there. Uh, one thing I should mention up front, a lot of people have asked me, like, oh, we're so sorry you've left ASP.NET and you're now working on Azure. Uh, I should actually be clear, I still own ASP.NET, I still work on ASP.NET, this team still works for me, um, and so I actually haven't left ASP.NET. Um, in fact, pretty much all the .NET server pieces actually work for me. Um, and so I am focusing a lot on Azure the last couple of months, but uh, rest assured, uh, my heart still belongs to ASP.NET and, uh, and the .NET um, pieces. So um, working on those as well. But for this session, I'm specifically going to be talking about ASP.NET MVC, uh, and specifically v4, uh, which we just shipped the beta of this morning. Uh, and so all the demos I'm going to show here today, you can do as well, uh, and hopefully, if I get a free hour tomorrow, I'm going to write a blog post about them that you can actually download and try them out on your own local machine. So the MVC4 release has lots of new features, uh, and I'm only going to get a chance to touch on a couple of them uh, here this, uh, today, uh, but hopefully a couple pretty exciting ones uh, that uh, you'll like. We've got great productivity features like bundling and minification, database migrations that make your life as developers a lot easier. We also have some really cool new APIs and capabilities, things like web APIs, mobile web, real-time communication, and async uh, that go beyond just productivity. Uh, but also really enable new scenarios, and we think are going to let you build even better uh, and more modern web apps than ever before. Uh, and the cool thing is, all these features I'm going to show today work with VS 2010 and .NET 4, so you don't need a new version of VS. You don't have to install anything on a server in order to run MVC 4. Uh, you just actually deploy your application, and it's uh, been deployable, the actual framework assemblies, uh, and so it'll just work in any hosting environment, whether it's Azure or whether it's your own local hosting uh, solution. Uh, so it's really easy to take advantage of, and the MVC4 beta does have a go-live license, uh, so if you want to start using some of these features, you can start doing it immediately. So with that, let's actually go into Visual Studio. Uh, we're going to do lots of demos here today. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, by doing one here and just do file new project. And so uh, MVC4 installs side by side with MVC2, 3, and uh, other releases. And so if I want to, I can just say new, what, name, what do you want to name the project? Red Shirt 3. Red Shirt 3, okay. Um, uh, I think the last one was Red Shirt 2, um, the last session. So we're going to name it's Red Shirt 3, and we're going to use MVC4. Why don't we call it Red Shirt 4, just so we don't get all confused, uh, especially me. Um, it will match the version number there. Um, when you click that, you'll notice we get a new project template dialog uh, that has a few more options than we've had in previous releases. Uh, in particular, we have a new mobile application template, which I talked a little bit about in the keynote this morning. We'll talk a little bit more uh, later on in this talk. We also have a new web API template. Uh, that uh, provides kind of a, a template if you just want to build a pure web API solution, although you can also add mobile and web API to standard internet project templates as well. And we also have a single page app uh, template if you want to build a rich Ajax experience uh, that um, uh, is doing most of the client binding on the client side and then calling to things like web API on the server side. So for this app, I'm just going to use the internet template uh, and hit OK. And uh, this is basically scaffold out for me a site that has a bunch of features in it. We're going to be coming back to this site repeatedly uh, over the next couple sections, and we're going to add a whole bunch of features to it. I'm just going to run it now, though, so you can get a sense of what it looks like. Um, it's a little bit prettier than uh, our old version of our site uh, that we've shipped in previous MVC releases. Uh, and so we've spent a little bit more time on styling. Uh, but we've also, more importantly, uh, updated it to kind of include new best practices. So it uses Modernizer. It uses semantic HTML markup. Uh, it uses bundling by default uh, so that the JavaScript as well as the CSS is really tight and small. Um, and uh, if you basically drill into it, it's also easy to customize. You can see here we're using uh, sections, uh, which is sort of a semantic HTML5 uh, uh, tag. 
Um, we also, for login and registration, now support AJAX-based login registration, but we fall back if you don't have JavaScript. So it's kind of a nice, modern, clean look and feel. Uh, we're also looking probably for the final release uh, to integrate OData support, uh, sorry, OAuth support for uh, login as well. So in addition to using Forms Auth, you could also use Facebook, Google+, uh, Live ID, or any other OAuth-based solution to log in as well. So nice modern app, makes it easy to get started, um, and we're going to come back to this a few more times throughout the talk. Let's talk about a couple features then. First one I'm talking about is uh, two features that are often used together, one called bundling and one called minification. How many people here do bundling or minification? That sounds very personal. But uh, uh, we have this built in. Um, and so you can now take advantage of it within your applications. And for people that are wondering, I have no idea what this means, uh, why I would care about this. Basically, it makes your sites faster. Um, and it makes your app experience better for your users. So it's a good feature. It's one you want to take advantage of, and it's really easy to do now with a new MVC4 release. And basically the way it does this is by reducing the number and size of HTTP requests that you make within your application. Uh, and by reducing the number of individual calls and by reducing the payload of each call, uh, the page loads faster for the user, feels faster, um, and they're happier. Uh, and it works by convention, so there's no configuration required in order to enable it. Uh, you don't need to run a post-build step, uh, which is what a lot of people do today. Um, instead, you can just drop files in a directory, and it just works. At the same time, though, it's fully customizable and extensible, uh, so that if you want to plug, plug in your own custom pipeline or you want to do custom post-processing, or you want to use CoffeeScript or Less or SAS or other uh, kind of um, uh, languages that transform into JavaScript or CSS, you can do that as well, and it works great. So how does this work? So conceptually, the way to think about bundling and minification, think, imagine you have a project that has a bunch of scripts and a bunch of style sheets, and you split them out into separate files. The way you'd reference them today from uh, a page uh, would be just sort of standard link uh, references. Um, and, um, and then you do, in this case here, six separate HTTP calls to six separate style sheets. What you can do with bundling and minification is basically shrink that down into one link reference uh, that instead of pointing at individual files, you just point to the directory name and then you say slash CSS. And on the server side now, ASP.NET, when you send a request like that, will look in that directory, find all the CSS style sheets, merge them together, strip out white space, strip out comments, and send down a single HTTP payload to the browser. Um, everything renders the same way, but now it renders much faster because I'm doing it as a single HTTP request. Likewise, uh, with JavaScript, I can now just send, uh, instead of lots of separate JavaScript files, I can just say scripts slash JS, because scripts is the folder. Slash JS just indicates the content type I want to pull from the folder. And ASP.NET will, again, take all the JavaScript files, merge them together, strip out the white space in CSS, and send it down. So let's see that in action. So, a uh, simple app here I'm going to run. It's called the Bundling and Minification app. Uh, and uh, if you look at um, the HTML here, I have a layout file. It looks like this. And so you can see here I have two CSS references. I've got five JavaScript references. Some of these references are for framework libraries, like jQuery and Knockout. And some of these are kind of custom scripts that are app-specific. Uh, and right now, if we run this page and... Uh, let's use F12 to look at the browser tools. Hit Start Capture. You'll see that this page is doing a bunch of separate independent HTTP requests. Notice that some of them take different amounts of time. If I have lots of files, they'll actually sometimes be staggered because the browser will only do a certain number of requests at the same time. Uh, and it's going to, you know, each one of these, uh, in some cases, is a per pretty hefty file in terms of size. So what I can do uh, to make this site load a little faster is basically just comment these things out. And instead, I'm going to use an approach like this. So I can still use just static HTML files. Uh, just static HTML, there's no server-side handlers at all, no custom methods I need to call. Instead, I just say slash content slash CSS, slash script slash JS, slash script slash custom slash JS. And I'm going to create automatically three separate bundles, so three HTTP payloads that merge all those files together um, and uh, pull them into my page. And so now when I rerun this app, everything works exactly the same. I don't need to change any of my markup. Uh, if I go view source now, I just have three references. And if I look at the F12 tools, you'll see I have fewer HTTP requests coming down. 
And one thing you might notice is that the payload is actually a lot smaller. So for example, uh, my JavaScript payload is actually smaller because if I double click on it and look at the response, we've pulled out all the white space, we've merged it down uh, and minified it. We even kind of compressed some of the variables um, so that uh, it is um, uh, really lightweight and easy. If I go to the content of the CSS, notice we've merged all the CSS together. And so the original files look like uh, so, where I have a reset file and a site CSS file. Now, when I set them down using the tools, um, if I zoom in here, you can see we've compressed it all, we've merged it all, it's fast, it's minified, your users will be happier. Um, and uh, the nice thing about this is you can still, as a developer, have separate files. So a lot of people use a reset approach to kind of clear out styles across different browsers. I can uh, nicely... Uh, uh, separate that file out because it's kind of a standard boilerplate file. And then I can have, if I want to, multiple CSS files to logically define the styles for my site. Likewise, for my custom scripts, I could have a framework folder as well as a custom folder or whatever I want to call it. And again, it's just sort of by convention, just create the, the right structure you want, reference the folder, and away you go. In addition uh, to being able to just reference things directly as standard HTML elements, we also, will have, uh, we also have built in a couple of helpers. In the beta, they're a tiny bit verbose uh, in that they're called system.web.optimization.bundle.tables.bundle.resolve.bundle.url. Uh, and one bit of feedback I gave the team was like, maybe we could make that a little smaller. Uh, and so it's probably going to be called html.bundle um, as a helper in the final release. Um, but uh, basically, uh, you might ask, well, why would I do that instead of this? Well, this feature, this helper actually does one extra thing, which is kind of nice is if you actually look at uh, the HTML, uh, and we'll zoom it in so you can see it. Unlike the static ones that I had earlier, you'll notice that this references the same folder structure, but then it adds onto it uh, kind of a, a magic uh, string. And basically this magic string is looking at the contents of your directory on the server, and it's basically creating a unique hash that represents the contents. And then what ASP.NET will do is say, cache this file for a year. Uh, and so that file, if the user closes their browser and comes back, within the next year, they're never going to even request that same file. The browser will just serve it directly out of its local cache. The beauty is, if you ever make a change to the JavaScript or change to the CSS, we'll automatically send down a new magic string, which means the browser will automatically request the new version of the file. And so that gives you a way that you can actually edge cache things in the browser or on intermediate proxy caches, uh, but the string gives you a cache-busting token so that if the file ever does change or your, any of your scripts ever change, you, your users always pick up the new version. And the beauty is, it's all built in. All you need to do is just create a directory structure, stick standard CSS and JavaScript on the, file, on the system, and you get it for free. So a really easy way to take advantage of it. Hopefully a lot of benefits you can get from it. This works not only with standard JavaScript and CSS and with this kind of convention directory-based approach. You can also, if you go into your global.sax file, register explicit routes or explicit bundles that you want to use. So this just sort of enables the default convention-based approach where we have directories. If I wanted to have a name style or a named bundle like my custom bundle where I have explicit files in certain orders, I can also do that. Uh, I can also, if I wanted to, register my own custom uh, rules and custom uh, bundlers. And so this is an example of registering a coffee script or a less bundler um, in the system. And what I can do here is I'm just going to say, treat everything inside a folder that has a .coffee extension as a uh, coffee bundle. And so now I could just say, uh, within my site, um, I could drop in, how many people here are using CoffeeScript? How many people here have heard of CoffeeScript? How many people here drink coffee? Okay, well, it actually is unrelated, but it, it's interesting. Um, uh, anyway, uh, this is an example of CoffeeScript. It's uh, kind of a meta language or higher level language that compiles down into JavaScript. So it's a little bit more functional. Uh, people either typically love it or hate it. Uh, the cool thing here is I just dropped two coffee files in my folder uh, here called scripts, and I just basically have a coffee folder. Um, and what I can do is just uh, within my browser now is I'm just linking to that bundle by just saying slash script slash coffee slash coffee. And uh, when I do that and click it, ASP.NET will automatically take those multiple files, merge them, minify.